What up, fellow Mominators? Welcome to another mom vlog. Did you know why we call doctors quacks? It's because they're actually only educated to care for ducks. And, and calling them a quack ugh, is, is like a dog whistle to let them know that we know. And we're watching them. Tune in tomorrow for more Mominator news. Oh, God. Good evening, ladies, lasses, and lasses, and welcome to the click. You smell amazing today. Oh, my God. I smell something different. Is it you, Ethan? Oh, my God, Ethan. You just stand over the crowd with that very pleasant smell. Anyway, today we're going to do something absolutely amazing that you might have guessed from the intro. We're going to look at shite mom group say, which is a mix of, like, weird home remedies, conspiracies, and just really cringy, insane parent stuff. I do hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Mwah. By the way, did you know I have a YouTube now? Look at it, it's so cute. Oh my god. Do you want to watch me riding mango? Not like that. Mind out of gutter, please. And check the link in the description. It's out now for a limited time only. Super limited. Oh my god. You know, in 90 years, if we're still alive by then, and we're talking to our grand grandchildren, it's like, I remember the click YouTube. You know, all the family members and garbage. It doesn't matter. This matter. Okay. Um, my marketing is either like really bad or way too aggressive. Anyway, let's, <laughs> let's get into the memes, shall we? FTM here. My baby girl will arrive in about two weeks or less. Just thinking ahead of time. How can I give her a bath with soap and bubbles and stuff without messing up her pH balance? What? Should I keep the diaper on? Wait, you... You want... <laughs> Yeah, shower your baby with a diaper on. It's gonna be good. What about when she's older and out of diapers? Yeah, no, then you put a diaper on just for the bath. I personally wear tampons in the bath with certain chemicals in it, but I know baby can't wear a tampon. What is this logic? I suppose, yeah, that's a very efficient diaper, I suppose. You just put a tampon in there like a cork and, and then you're done, right? Right? <laughs> I hate this, like, pH BS. It's with everything. It's like, ah, oh, let me take my alkyne water and spritz it with citrus. That is not alkyne anymore. What are you talking about? Did a boob cake. Boob cake. Did a boob cake smash for my son's first birthday to celebrate one year old and one year of breastfeeding. Mmm, this is... Imagine showing up to a party like this. What a treat. We are dairy and eggs free, so it's a homemade vegan cake and buttercream frosting. Oh, thank God. I thought I was going to say a homemade ass and you use like your own milk. Okay, okay. <sighs> he was not a fan of smashing into it. Lol. Made the same cake. Different design for its birthday party and that went a little better. Yay. Wait, smashed into it? What do you mean? Do you, did you like face plant your baby into a cake? They, they're not going to appreciate that. They don't know what's going on. They're one years old. What? <laughs> Can you imagine if, if, like, a dad did the same thing? Like, happy birthday, son. I made a cake shaped after my pee-pee because that's where you came from. <laughs> oh, I want to make, like, a crazy dad's group. Oh, my God. My 12 and 10-year-old children want to watch Game of Thrones with me because they have heard me talk about it several times. Most of the show I'm fine with them watching. I don't even have a problem with the nudity. But what about the naughty scenes? I think the storyline is amazing, and I think my children would really enjoy it. But I don't know what to do about the 2% of it that makes me super uncomfortable with them watching. Skipping isn't necessarily a good option as sometimes the conversation during those scenes are important to the story. <laughs> no, you do an edit version where you just zoom in on the faces. Do I just let them watch it and be available for conversation that arose from it? We watched the first episode the other night and they don't seem faced by it. But I am really uncomfortable. I don't know, 12 and 10 seems, seems a little young to watch. Game of Thrones, no? Savor it for when they come of age. It is PG-45 after all. Mom group, help! How would you react if your husband tells you he wants to try the, the butt naughties? But he's the one who would like to have something in the butt. He says he'd like to spice things up. Why are you posting this in a mom group where people usually talk about, I don't know, diaper brands? <laughs> this is, lady, time and place. I am Gen X, and I have a huge problem with how I'm left carrying the weight for millennials. Oh gee, here we go, let's see what doozy we have today. For example, I'm 42, and my daughter is 22. She decided a while ago she does not want any kids. She's actually getting a procedure for sterilization next year. But there are souls that need to come into our family for ancestral or karmic reasons still needed to be born. So I am stuck birthing and raising two babies who should have been born to her, but can't because she's too selfish to have kids. <laughs> we joke how my 1.5 year old girl, her sibling is actually hers, but she just didn't want to have it. But deep down, it's not a joke. If she wasn't so selfish, I wouldn't have a toddler daughter right now. Out of all the weird priorities I've seen about having kids, maybe like... Ooh, we need to bring more souls into this world. So let me let me like give birth to my child's children for them in 
in the way you're putting it. This is super creepy, lady. Stop. Ancestral or karmic reasons is also so incredibly vague. Oh my god, the spirits will smile on us the more crotch goblins we poop out. Oh. oh my god, I'm obsessed with this woman who can recently free birth in the ocean. I don't think I can show all this, but she's she's giving birth on a beach. And they're making this like weird photo shoot about it. This doesn't seem safe. Like, like you know, child mortality in, in the wilderness isn't particularly good. What what if something goes wrong? Is it weird to still be nursing my 54 month old? They're almost 55 months old, if that makes a difference. When should I stop? Uh, why are you still counting age in months? They're like five years old and you're counting it in months? Hi there, I'm Click. I am turning 360 months soon. I think I'm gonna host some kind of party. Would you guys like to have like a birth month stream when I turn 360? Let me know in the comments. I would be thrilled to celebrate with all y'all. My son turns five at the end of this year, so I have to enroll him in school. The school has just told me I can't come and breastfeed him at recess and lunch. Outrageous. This is the norm. I don't want to flip this chair, but I'll do this. Oh, outrageous. I don't know what to do. I feel like they're discriminating against me. It is it's only because you're you're a woman. If you were the dad who came into breastfeed, it would be perfectly fine. Uh, fun fact: males can actually produce. We we have like the glands and stuff. It's just not very common, I suppose. But yeah, fun by like oh god, this thing is so ah. Uh, fun biological facts, educational content with a click. But uh, no, don't go into uh, don't go into uh, school for for kids and breastfeed your child. It's um, it's very strange. My friend recently had a C-section and she's over the moon about her baby. But how do I tell her that she's not a mom because she didn't give birth? You're not a real mom unless you gave VJJ birth to it. What? Huh? Imagine someone gatekeeping you being a parent. Dear God, do they all of a sudden not share your like genetic code because ooh, you had the specific procedure while giving birth. It's not your baby. Or is it still your baby, but you're not allowed to identify as a parent because you didn't do it exactly the same you did. I don't get this. Why? Out of all things in the world to gatekeep, why do you care? Guess I better shove the baby back in and try again so I can earn my official title. I tell my 14 year old to go back where she came from and she goes, well, that might might be a bit more painful for you than when I came out, so... I brought you into this world and I can take you out. Solve this dilemma? <laughs> we just suck them up again? <laughs> oh. oh, it's like, it's like, you know, when you're on the toilet doing number two and uh, it just, uh, you, you flex the wrong way and it kind of goes back up. It's like that times a thousand. My husband and I are traveling overseas. We plan on flying business class and having our two toddlers in coach with a nanny. Has anyone ever done this? How did it go? Can I go back to the coach area and be with the kids if they cry or need me? Oh, that's that's very strange. It's very odd to only upgrade yourself and not want to sit with your kids and you leave the toddlers through. At least you have a nanny, I suppose. But this is so, this gives me such weird vibes. You just, me and my husband are sitting in the luxury part and our, our babies and the nanny, they can sit in the, in the, <laughs> in the trash room. <laughs> Why? As if sharing air airplanes with toddlers isn't like annoying enough. We have, we have these people that just splurge annoyance. Uh, how do I convince my cousin who is dead set on a home birth to not do it at home circumcision? Her husband is a dog breeder who crops ears and dogs tails, so she thinks that he could be able to perform a circumcision just fine. This makes me very nervous for the baby. She believes it is fine, so I will be showing her these replies to prove to her that not the frick it is not. <laughs> oh my god, what? You know what the worst thing is? The way this reads, I'm kind of assuming they have already gone to a doctor, gotten a doctor's advice and said, uh-uh, this is a horrible idea. And they're like, uh-uh, don't, don't trust the quacks because, because the ducks and, and the secret society and all that. But, but, but then, you know, they try to go to Facebook because the only thing they listen to is Facebook. So if they can show a Facebook comment section that, that t says this is bad, that trumps the doctor's opinion and voila, you can uh, hopefully not have this happen. Yikes. Spray bottle full of water. As horrible as this is going to sound, I have done it. My family refused to listen to me when I said to stop kissing my son. So I brought a spray bottle, filled it with water and started spraying them. It's a bit unconventional, I assure you it works. Ah, sit down, aunt. Psh, psh. You kissed my my son on the forehead one time too many. Psh, psh. You, you bitch. Psh, psh, psh. Take that. Um, I mean, first off, it's not particularly like, you know, ooh, it, it's so horrible and serious. Like, no, nah, it's just it's just a little bit uncomfortable. I don't think anyone cares that much. It's just really weird. <laughs> this is what you do with, like, rambunctious cats. <laughs>
Can someone tell me what the appendix does? I'm in the pet's emergency department and they were going to call CPS because I will not consent to their educated guess to remove my daughter's appendix. Any knowledge or support will be very much appreciated. Um, yeah, well, nothing. <laughs> it does nothing. I mean, literally astronauts, before they go to space, they have their appendix removed, whether or not they're in bad condition, just so they don't have an appendix situation like while in space, because, you know, doctors and stuff are not that nearby. So if they are pretty sure that it is the appendix, just, just get rid of it. Like, going underneath the knife for no reason is, I mean, obviously never an amazing idea, but if they think that's what it is, it's an organ that literally does nothing. Like, it, it's nice. They, they might have to remove it later in life anyway. Just yayit. Not sure if this could be asked or not, but <laughs> how, how do you mama shave your downstairs when your 8.5 was pregnant? I can't see it and I have to resort to asking my three and a half year old. She's mature for her age. Laughing emoji. Oh, you know it's gonna be a good post when it's a laughing emoji. But she was not enthusiastic about my request. Oh, gee. I wonder why. Imagine your parent come up to you like, hey, hey, honey, can you can you trim papa's downstairs? I can't see it past my tummy. <sighs> <sighs> Please help. We have a friend whose 14 year old daughter is having a psychotic break. She doesn't recognize her mom. That is so tragic. Oh my god. What oils? Ah, oh, there we go. Of course, why did I expect anything less? Oils are not going to stop a psychotic break. I just lost a friend to the ceasing to exist earlier this year because she was having one and was an adult, so we couldn't force her to get help. Go to the doctor. Oh yeah, how about smearing some lard on you instead? I have this butter. Does that work just as well? I just cream my neck in butter and bada bing, bada boom. No more anxiety. For anyone out there who's struggling with these things, you can get through it and don't hesitate reaching out for help if you feel that things are going downhill. Everyone needs help sometime. And, and that goes for every single person, you included. You are not different. There is this idea going around society and social media that like, oh, you should be self-made and uh, you should be hyper independent. Nobody is entirely self-made. Every single one of us, even, even the ones that identify as pretty self-made, have always had some sort of supporting figure, some mentor, some sort of support people, you know, coming up to talk to them or friends listening or bouncing ideas, whatever it might be. Nobody does everything alone. Not to mention every profession in the world. People go to the doctor, you go to the mechanic to fix your car, you go to the psychiatrist when you are struggling with mental health. Nobody goes through life without existence of anyone else. It is a complete fabrication. And don't let that pressure get to you. If you need help, you are perfectly entitled to get it, and it's perfectly okay. Or you can smear butter on your forehead or whatever, but I don't think it's gonna work. Can autism come from a baby falling off a bed a few times as an infant, five to eight months old? What? Why would you give a baby the opportunity to fall off the bed multiple times? Like if it happens once, maybe don't leave the baby on the bed. This is really the definition of insanity. Try the same thing over and over and expect a different result. Ah, oh, little Timmy fell down and smacked his skull into the floor. I <laughs> better lift him up again. Oh, it happened again. Oh no. Well, third time is a charm, I guess. But oh, Timmy, no. I remember hearing a story from uh, a childhood friend of mine who said that their family got like a chihuahua baby. And it was really tiny, like it could fit in your paw, it was so small. And it wasn't allowed in the furniture. And I asked, oh, why isn't this allowed in the furniture? Does it, does it pee and stuff in there? It's like, no, 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 no. If it falls off the couch, it might die. <laughs> because it's so small. And so yeah, if this happens, don't repeat it. What the frick? Other than breast milk, which is best, are there alternatives for baby formula? Ma'am, go to your pediatrician and not Facebook. Actually, other mothers are the best resource. Doctor don't know squat about things that are useless. The mothers do doctors read books. They don't read milk. I mean, asking parents for parental advice it doesn't feel particularly far-fetched, you know. But when it comes to more objective comparisons about nutritional value in various diets, maybe like a singular parent with only one anecdotal story about parenting and experience isn't gonna give you the comparisons you're looking for. <laughs> like, there's a difference between asking for, like, general experience and advice and getting, like, a side-by-side -side comparison, like an Excel sheet with, like, ooh, this food would fit best for this nutritional purpose. It's different. It's very different. But the, the doctors are run by the duck. A society? Freaking quacks? We discovered last October that our one-year-old daughter has a severe, life-threatening peanut allergy. We had to go by ambulance to ER due to the anaphylaxis less 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 slicks. First time visiting MIL, mother-in-law, I'm assuming, since then, and she tries to give her a Ritz peanut butter cracker just to see if we were right about her allergy or just being dramatic. FML. 
Worst case scenario, you kill your granddaughter. Best case scenario, you get to talk shy to your kid and their spouse about how allergies are fake. I guess that's exactly the best case scenario she was hoping for. And she's willing to gamble the life of her grandchild for a gotcha moment. Yeah, if that was my mother, she would never see my family or me ever again. Probably same here. It's like, oh, I just wanted to try out the allergy if it's actually as bad as you say. It's like, no, I told you they could die from this. And you're like, you're just laddie dying about it to like, what, prove a point? What are you, freaking mentally five? Jesus. Anon post because <laughs> I am ashamed. So I joined his group and quickly learned the psychological and physical effect of spanking. I immediately tried to tone down on hitting my child as much as today, but he kept climbing out of his car seat. Try to tone it down. How about stopping? Yikes, or not do it to begin with. Jeez. I don't put the straps over his shoulders, but under its armpits because he would slide out of them. He has learned how to wiggle completely out of the car seat and move around freely in the back seat. It sounds like you should probably have one of those, you know, little kid chairs, um, gonna be honest. I told him repeatedly to go back to his seat, but he kept refusing. It got to the point where I pulled over and spanked him so hard, and he still has welts and is bruising four hours later. I'm scared his daycare is going to see the marks and call CPS on me. Is there any way I can make the welts and bruising go down faster? I swear I will never spank him again. I just love my temper. I know I will get hate, but I promise I am working on it. Not that I am for spanking. I mean, at least not in... <laughs> This, th this context. But th this isn't even like a gentle slap or something. It isn't like, uh, not stay out of the cookie jar. This is to the point where it's actually leaving marks. And the worst thing that makes me freak out about this is that you have already proven that you're willing to cross this line. And, and that's the thing with most things in life. Sadly, once someone has crossed the line, they're much more likely to do it again because, you know, it's not a barrier that they have. And this doesn't only go for this. This goes for various sorts of abuse and all, all kinds of garbage. So this is uh, really scary. You should probably go to some kind of counseling about this and probably for your child too after this. Uh, if, if you want to have any sort of chance about being a reasonable parent, this is really yikes. Why can't I do to make sure my baby's on the smaller side? My first was 6 pounds, 14 ounces, and I just love tiny babies. I'm afraid my second one might be bigger. Yikes. I don't want big, chubby baby. Nothing bigger than 7 pounds at least. Is there something I can do to ensure this kid won't be too big? What are you Jeez, je oh my god. The 12 comments had no one agreeing with her, by the way. Oh, thank god, thank props, mom group. Jesus Christ, at least everyone is, isn't like this. I just found drugs, not marijuana, in my daughter's room. She's going to be 18 in two weeks and is graduating in three weeks. She's going away to college. I have no idea what to do. Her grades are good and she works five days a week in addition to going to school. Her mood has been super shitey lately. This makes sense. But what do I do? How do I handle this? Her dad and I are still together, but he will not be able to discuss this reasonably. I am afraid to tell him, but I'm more afraid for her. Her cousin died two years ago from financial poisoning help. They may seem harsh, but I would go right down to the police station and Show them what you found. I would also flip her room apart and keep looking for any more. You need to know who is supplying this to her. The police will talk to her and let her know the deadly facts. There's a lot of bad things that your local law enforcement could help you. Oh my god, there are so many layers to this. Jesus Christ. Why isn't any of the options here just, you know, first step, maybe talk to them? <laughs> How, how about that? Why are all the options instantly like, oh, I don't know who to tell. I'm afraid to tell my husband, but he will flip, which is also like a uh, yikes. And and you go to the police station instead. Why would you do that? You don't know the consequences of that. Teenagers do stupid things. And most of the time, like 90% of the time, talking about it fixes it. Not not 100% of the time, nothing in the world is 100%, but escalating it to like the most serious point of like calling the cops and making a criminal investigation about it, maybe that's not the first step to go about it in this case. You know, they don't seem to be going downhill, they don't seem to be like a raging addict. It sounds more to me like a teenager's doing well in life who like, ooh, I'm gonna be a little bit sneaky and experiment with something. Not that I necessarily support it, but, but maybe this is not the way to go about it. Hopefully at least one of the 37 comments was advice on having a calm conversation with her daughter. The commenter must have wanted to say, call the cops on her right now, but decided to show restraint. <laughs> <laughs> Yahoo! My eight-year-old son was my husband in several past lifetimes. This has been confirmed. Ooh, let's dig into the scientific data, shall we? Not only by him, since he remembers his past, but also by two mediums. He treats me with love I've never known. He cares for me when I'm sick, attends to, and intuits my every need. Leaves me love notes by my bed, talk about the devastation he felt when I died. He carries my groceries, open doors for me. The list goes on and on, like you could even imagine or ever expect an adult partner to act that way. He chose to come into his life as a transgender-born female, and he's aware that I'm here to help him navigate his upcoming challenges. He's always 
telling me how appreciative it is that it's such a strong protector. It is truly a very intense cell connection. This feels like it's really going down a very creepy rabbit hole. This this gives me such wild not even to mention like the oh mediums and past lives and stuff. My my own my own child is my husband, but oh the implications, man. And and like I just I just see love notes? What kind of love notes are you talking? Huh. I mean, love notes for family members is cute. You can do it, but but it's typically not the same kind of love as you have for, you know, a romantic partner. And I'm concerned which one this specifies. <laughs> On vacay, our 11-year-old son is in the same room as us. We thought he was asleep and he wasn't quirky face. Uh, we kept it quiet and he didn't see anything. We knew he was awake when he said, Guys, I am awake. Dang, that's so embarrassing. Why? Do you do it when in the same room? That's really weird. Some of my baby names I have in mind, some including middle names, Goldie Rose, Nova Rose, Hollow Lake, blah blah pretty. Oh, no, La La, La Clean or whatever. And then we have America, America, America Lee, and if it's a girl, we do America Lynn. <laughs> and the last one is just John. <laughs> You have all these, like, overly complex ideas about lumping your patriotism into your baby name, and there's just, ah, John. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> America Lynn, my day has been made. Oh my god. My friend told her two-year-old was loudly singing Baby Shark at the park, and she jokingly said to another mom there, I hope you like Baby Shark. And the mom said, <laughs> We don't listen to children's music. If you're wondering what it's like trying to make mom friends in public. Maybe this is why everyone goes to Facebook. <laughs> oh god. That is so sad. Like, what is it? My two-year-old is sophisticated. We only listen to Beethoven. <laughs> Let your children sing Baby Shark. It's quirky. Really annoying, but quirky. Anyone here thinks their child is younger than what they say? What do you mean? Who's, who say? What? She just turned a year old. My husband and my mom have been saying for months she seems younger. She isn't crawling or walking, no top teeth. She just seems younger. She's super chunky though, 32 pounds. That's, that's not how age works. What do you mean? What do you mean seems younger as? You were there, per presumably, when she was born. What exactly do you mean seems younger? <laughs> Oh my god, she just aged so well. She is one year old and she doesn't look a month over eight months. <laughs> Whoa. Here are my maternity photos I promised to share. It wasn't a strong one. The queen is tethered to my belly inside a cage. We just dumped the bees on me and they naturally began to beard. I was terrified as I'm allergic. Nice. Oh, there's a helicopter. Probably chasing the bees. Uh, it's gone now. They'll never find my bees. Well, that lasts for weeks. Don't worry, this was approved by my doctor. But was worth it. This is roughly 10k bees. W but... But why, though? This might be a reach, but my three-year-old has always been obsessed with cars and now into driving them. I let him drive down our road and straight to my lap, but that's not enough for him and it's obviously all I can let him do, lol. Is there somewhere in the lower mainland you can take three-year-olds to drive vehicles? Yeah, I heard in Texas they're reducing driver's license to three and a half years old, so... JK, JK, that was a quirky joke. Thank you, I am professionally funny. Don't cut the cord! D don't cut the cord? I, I think I want to. When all the blood pass to my baby, I will do. Wait until placenta is birthed, and then after first breastfeed, then ask baby if it's okay to separate them. It belongs to the baby, and it's the same as me cutting off your arm. Ah uh, yes, humans have a third arm on their tummy and they cut it off at birth and that's why you have the scar in form of a belly button. Humans have a third arm, that's my new favorite conspiracy. My boyfriend and I have tried to do the naughty since my son was born. He always cries and we stop and my boyfriend doesn't pressure me or anything. He asked me to just breastfeed the baby while we do our thing, but it feels odd. Yeah, that, that sounds odd. I feel uncomfortable, not in a dirty way, just uncomfortable. I can't focus on us. Do any other ladies breastfeed while doing the naughties? <coughs> Facebook. <laughs> Why? I'm sorry if this may get a bit confusing, but I need to talk to someone without blow blowing my lid. So I have multiple kids, but it only concerns my two boys, 17 and 15. My 15-year-old started dating, I use that term lightly, a 17-year-old girl, she'll be 18 in a couple of weeks. They broke up because she told him she had feelings for my older son. Shite hit the fan between the boys, resulting in a huge hole in my wall, and 15-year-old had to go stay with my mom two minutes away. Had to go, okay, okay, fine. 
Now my 17 year old and a girl have been dating for three weeks. She is in my house more often than not. Found out on Friday she's prego. Digital test says two to three weeks. She went back to her parents on Saturday and her mom took her for blood test, which got the results this morning. She is three to five weeks along, meaning the baby could be either of my sons. She is adamant that it was my older sons because they were fooling around with each other before she broke up with my younger son. I want to get her to do a DNA test to find out which son, if either of them, cause let's be serious, is the father. What rights do I have? to get this done, seeing as they are both still minors. Dear God, I thought it was gonna be some petty teenage drama, but oh, that escalated. Jikes. I think the 17-year-old should be the one living with grandma. The 15-year-old lost his girlfriend and his brother and then his home too. Yeah, that sounds overly harsh. Like, yikes. Anyone knows a refugee that needs a place to stay? My husband and I are transplants with no family in the area. We could use help with a newborn. Someone please take this down. Ah, refugees looking for shelter. <laughs> you mean a free nanny. Not to mention, would you really want a complete stranger you may or may not even share a language with to watch like a newborn baby? I, I don't think I would let anyone watch my newborn baby who I don't know personally. That's really strange. Not to mention how it's so grossly trying to exploit desperate people. This is very yikes. A comment in a group about the woman who gave birth in the ocean. Oh my god, it's that one! Heck yeah! I love this so much. Good for you. Mama's intuition is the best. I've heard humanity used to give birth in sea caves with assistance from dolphins in Lemuria times. I have heard. <laughs> my sources. I overheard this conversation about dolphins giving birth to humans. Such a beautiful welcome to a sweet soul. Because dolphins have opposable thumbs, right? Actually, dolphins are very good midwives. When a dolphin has a baby, another dolphin will catch the baby with its snout and guide it to the surface when it's first breath while the mother rests and they have done it with people as well. What do you- done what with people? Swim up with the babies to the surface? The, but, but, but I'm assuming the human doesn't give birth at the bottom of the ocean. What are you talking about? Done the same with people as well. I- I heard that humans used to give birth in sea caves. You see, I over here, <laughs> I tried all the natural remedies, but last night I had a fever and after two weeks I'm getting some help from Western medicine. After two weeks I'm getting help from Western medicine. Take your child to the doctor, dear God. Hardest part, telling my doc office we cannot wear masks. Somehow we got in and are getting care. I just won't bend my values for nothing. Oh, it's one of them strong moms who won't take care of their child and not wearing a mask is the most important problem in my life because I am dealing with real issues. Oh, I, I dislike this. I did my own research. Bzz, I, I watched someone else's YouTube video. Ding! <laughs> That's basically what it is. I am an expert in the subject. I watched a 17 minute long documentary on YouTube. A midwife I saw today, not who I will be having my home birth, told me that if I had a breech baby at home, both me and the baby could die. Just curious how exactly that could lead to my death. I mean, I am a mominator after all. I mean, I guess uterine rupture, but would that be directly caused by the baby being breech? Obviously, I'm not taking her word as law and most just annoyed that I'm getting the death threat. What do you mean death threat? A doctor tells you, this might be dangerous. Uh, I advise against it. Ah, how dare you death threat me? A death threat means that the person who is telling it is saying, hey, I might be the one who does the killies. Not saying like, hey, you probably shouldn't do that because because you might harm yourself. That's not that's not a threat. That's <laughs> this is common sense. At only 29 weeks, I merely asked if I was midwives trained in breach delivery in our area. Go to the hospital! Thoughts on having zegs in front of your child slash wren? And personally, it's a no-go for me in a separate room and not at all. I saw this comment in a parent group and it caused uproar. We were in TN over the last weekend, had two queen beds. The furthest bed had my 10 and 12 year old boys in it. The other bed was for me and my husband. And then we had a playpen for the baby to sleep in the other side of us. We did it facing away from the kids, acting like we were sleeping on our sides. I think we're pretty with this screen and did a great job. Then I got up to go to the bathroom, the kids didn't even notice. The 10 year old definitely would have said something too if he would have noticed. Or <laughs> When my son finished high school at age four, I finally conceded that he might be gifted. He finished high school at age four? Was he homeschooled? He is unschooled. He's never done formal education. Let me get this straight. So, he's four years old, he has finished high school, but he's also never gone to school. What? Uh, uh. My child is seven and still booba feeds. Recently he was diagnosed with leukemia. I do all the right things by giving food from our only homestead. Drink the rainwater. Yeah, that's the known medical treatment for heckin' cancer. Am I right? Ooh, rainwater. 
The doctor who diagnosed my son said that he more than likely would need chemotherapy, and I don't want to force those disgusting chemicals. Should I breastfeed more often? Give him more organic, cold-pressed black seed oil? What on earth? Are, what, what, what did that come from? Organic, cold-pressed black seed oil? Ooh, the anti-cancer treatment the doctors hate you for. Doctors hate this one trick. Let your child die, which... Of, yeah, of course you're gonna hate it! At some point, this will become medical neglect and the authorities need to know. This kid deserves a chance. When treated properly, childhood leukemia has a generally overall high cure rate. How devastating for this child. I am just stuck at her calling chemo disgusting chemicals. Like she's making some bold, smug statement about how they're not really medicine. Like, of course not. At the most basic level, chemo is literally the use of intracellular poisons. It's supposed to be disgusting and toxic because it's trying to destroy whatever's making you sick in the first place. Cheers to the disgusting chemicals that helped save my life in high school and again in undergrad. This woman seems more interested in saving her son's cancer's life than her son's life. Oof. But also, yes, please, for the love of God, never do this. Oh my God. Locals on Facebook be like, Kinsliana drank bleach earlier, heart rate's currently nine, thinking about taking her to the ER, but was wondering what other mamas think I should do. Has anyone tried essential oils for this? <laughs> it really do be like that. It's insane. Is forcing your 13-year-old daughter to drink the entirety of a 1.75-liter bottle of Smirnoff brand vodka in one sitting an appropriate punishment after she stole her older sister's ID in an attempt to acquire alcohol illegally? If you're looking to kill them by alcohol poisoning, yeah. I'm also a little bit surprised why, you know, the brand is so specific. It's, it has to be Smirnoff vodka, you know, absolute vodka or anything. No, no, no. The punishment has to be this brand. Um, they'll, they'll probably die from both. So there you go. Don't, don't worry about it. Okay, 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 mommies, mommy-nators. I know I'm gonna get judged for this, but if I'm having twins, is there a way to only abort one baby? I'm only 18 weeks, but I just found out I'm having a boy and a girl, and I really don't want the boy. Ew, I am scared to death of having a son. I hate little boys, and I was expecting two girls. What do you mean expecting two girls? What? So I already did the nursery in pink and purple flowers. Uh-huh. I know I could abort both babies, but I already love this little girl. What should I do? I am so sad this person's gonna bring any life into this world. <sighs> That, that, oh, that's so depressing. I hope I hope they don't inherit their mama's brain, at least. What they say you need for homeschool. A fancy schoolroom, expensive curriculum, teaching degree, detailed plan lessons. <laughs> oh, silly. What you actually need. A comfy chair, a library card, love for your child, a curious child. If they want to play with mud in the backyard, that is the same as a master's degree. I read so on Facebook. A friend of mine's son's got attacked and bit multiple times by a neighbor's dog. Dog is not well taken care of. Of. Rabies shot was allegedly administrated by the owner and is not documented per police statement. The dog has been a problem for months. Rabies shot? Quick Google search says it's 100% effective. Due to the situation with dogs' lack of attention care medical records, what would you do if it was your child? The child has religious exemption for other immunities. Oh my god. Do you think this will cause problems? I would not get the rabies shot. Highly recommend looking at the home. If, uh, pfft, have your child just rubbing a carrot on, on the bite mark? That... Yeah. Alert, this is a joke. Obviously get the heckin' vaccine. Yikes. Rules for dating my son. Oh, this is like one of those, you know, toxic, like, rules for dating my daughter, I have a gun kind of post, but but it's the mama. Let's see what this little doozy has to offer. Rules for dating my son. He is not your ATM. Understand I don't like you and I never will. My god, what a healthy, <laughs> healthy family framework. <laughs> Hell yeah. I am everywhere. You hurt him. I hurt you. Respect me as his mama. Don't lie to him or to me. He is my prince, not your toy. I don't mind going back to jail. Uh-huh. Understand that I can make you go away. What exactly do you mean go- I mean, you're basically either threatening with framing them for some sort of crime, or literally, like, do, do the stabbies. Whatever you do to him, I will do to you. Yeah, if there ever is a bit of relationship drama or something, that, that, do you, I, I will do very horrible things that are highly illegal, and I don't know why you feel the need to do this sign. One thing I've noticed in life is also that people who are a bit more secure and stuff, they don't really feel the need to post this kind of like live, laugh, love sign, but with veiled threats against your son's partner on Facebook. <laughs> 
<laughs> this doesn't strike me as someone who's like a brave warrior IRL. This just strikes me as highly toxic and attention seeking. I recently found out my daughter has a boyfriend at school and I asked the school to set up a parent conference meeting with the boy's parents, but they're not able to. Why is that? What do you mommy suggest, mominators? Press 1 to report a student absence, 2 for staff absence, and 3 if you like the school to set up social meetings. <laughs> or just, you know, I don't know, hit up the parents like, Hey yo, our kids like each other, let's, let's talk about it fam. Oh yes, let's arrange the marriage. I feel so bummed. I was counting on my parents to take my baby from Friday morning to Saturday morning so my hubby and I can spend three days together, just us two. Turns out my mom wants to go out Friday night and she only wants to watch her on Saturday and part of Sunday. My mom works five days a week, so I understand. But I only drop off my baby every other Saturday because I'm mindful of the fact that she works. I guess having a baby was a real eye-opener that you can't really count on anyone because I truthfully thought more people would be there for us. Thanks for letting me vent, lol. Can you imagine people prioritizing their own life before mine? Can you imagine my choice having a baby? It's not something that everyone else adapts all their plans around. And it sounds like they're pretty heckin' helpful to begin with. What is this massive entitlement? This is, this is so good. All right, mominators, I am really struggling with deodorant. Let me give you a little backstory. I'm 31 and my fourth child is almost four months. I am breastfeeding and I am not getting my girl time yet. So I know my hormones are still a little wacky. Beginning of this year, I cut out soap and I've just been using Norwex body cloth, which I love, but I can't seem to get my armpits under control. Oh, so you no longer use soap and you're surprised that stuff smells? Yeah, seems seems reasonable. They constantly smell, and now my shirts are being stained, which I hadn't had that problem since high school. I've tried a little tree farm and earth mama, and they just aren't doing it for me. Please help. Well, the answer is very close. It's something you have tried before, right in front of your nose. It starts with S and ends with O. Anyone feel like pregnancy came at the wrong time due to others around you having a baby at the same time? Feeling really disappointed because of this reason? I'm so sad. I'm not as excited and happy for my first baby because other people had to ruin it. It's not fair. I just wanted to feel special. What? But I definitely do not and it makes me feel hatred. My friends are also pregnant and I don't feel special. How dare they ruin my experience? I wanted to be the one with the baby, but other people have babies too. That makes my baby not special and I don't... I Oh. Maybe this shouldn't be the reason for having a family. <laughs> it is my duty as a parent to research and question everything. For the sake of my children, I do not blindly trust. Doctors are not the authority. Teachers are not the authority. The government is not the authority. I mean, some sometimes they, they are, though. I am. Oh, that was the ending I was not expecting. Jesus. I mean, sure, question stuff. Don't blindly believe everything in life because, you know, Oftentimes, people don't have your best interest in mind. You know, just because someone says something doesn't mean that they necessarily have your best interest in mind. This goes for a lot of things in life. Don't be gullible. But it also goes without saying that you should be humble about your own knowledge and stuff. You know, for example, if someone with an expertise in a specific field tells you something and they have no real incentive to lie or nothing to gain from it, most of the time they are gonna be telling the truth. That, that's just kind of how it works. If, however, they have some kind of incentive to, you know, lie to you, whatever it might be, you're like, ooh, the, the car salesman says this is the best car ever, you know, they, they gain from you buying it, so, you know, then you can take it with a bit of salt. But that goes for most things in the world. Common sense. Don't believe everything, but also don't just assume that everyone is trying to lie to you or anything. everything is part of a conspiracy, because it usually isn't. Well, uh, this lurkers and hurkers, I do hope you enjoyed this video. A mom group link below. No, but YouTube's link below. And, and all other cool stuff. Check it out, it's very cute. And I will see you in the very next video. Take care, you beautiful bean. Mwah.